We're just minutes away now from uh, the really the most critical part of the rendezvous flight. I shouldn't say we're minutes away, we're in the middle of it. Uh, this is uh, the real test. Can they now close in uh, as they had anticipated? And every other part of the orbital changes in and out of plane have taken place as planned. There's no reason to expect that this shall not. And then it becomes an eyeball situation, as they say. Uh, it'll be a matter of Shira flying in there just as he uh, expects to. Here's Paul Haney at Mission Control, Houston. Gemini 7 and Gemini 6 are now about 25 miles apart. They're over to Nana Reeve. We're listening to them via the Tanana Reeve station. And most of the conversation is between Borman and Shira. Borman apparently cannot see the acquisition lights on 6. Here's how the conversation is going. Tanana Reeve, go remote. Tanana Reeve, remote. Tanana Reeve has acquisition. This is Gemini Control Houston. The time hack that you heard Tom Stafford make there was a reference to the start of his terminal phase initiation burn. It, uh, the hack he gave was three minutes from the burn, and this will be his time reference as they close on seven. As they move some uh, four and a half miles a second, swinging across the Indian Ocean. The pass is going to take them right up between the Carnarvon and the coastal central Quebec acquisition areas. We are hopeful that the coastal century will see and hear the uh, rendezvous as they come very close together up uh, in the, right about the Philippines area. This is, uh, this is the waiting time, of course. And it's all up to them. We'll come back to you as soon as we have new information. We have, this is Gemini Control at 5 hours, 29 minutes into the flight. It's all up to them. Some pretty important words of Paul Haney's from Mission Control. What he means is that the pilots, the spacecraft, are out of touch with ground stations now. They're following their flight plan as the uh, skilled test pilots that they are and uh, will make their rendezvous without help from the ground. 
Uh, Paul also suggesting that we hope that the coastal century Quebec gets a good communication signal with them. Uh, they're going to be right on the edge of his uh, communication area uh, so that uh, we can get confirmation as to how the, uh, the rendezvous mission has gone. But now mission control and uh, we must simply wait while Wally Shira and Tom Stafford in Gemini 6 and Frank Borman and Jim Lovell in Gemini 7 go through uh, this first rendezvous uh, in space. Incidentally, you heard Tadana Reeve uh, say that they had LOS, which means loss of signal. AOS, acquisition of signal, LOS, loss of signal, as these spacecraft pass over uh, these particular uh, tracking stations. During the final phase of this rendezvous mission, Gemini 6 must be eased up from its own circular orbit there, 17 miles below Gemini 7 into the one being flown, of course, by Gemini 7. Flight Director Chris Kraft described this for Nelson Benton. Now, the final maneuver is made when uh, Spacecraft 6, this, this uh, distance uh, from here to here is 34 nautical miles, approximately. And this distance is approximately 15. So that at this point, the spacecraft six uh, will apply a maneuver as computed by its onboard computer, and it will start a maneuver which carries it around such that 130 degrees of arc. Let me get that a little more correct for you. At about 130 degrees, this being 90 degrees, and then 40 more degrees. 130 degrees around is where the two would come up and meet and have the same orbit if he then applies the right velocity at this point to bring him into the same orbit as spacecraft seven. And this maneuver will have started one minute into darkness if we've gotten him in the right place by the maneuvers we've told him to conduct from the ground. So one, one minute into darkness and we want the darkness at this time so that spacecraft six can see the lights of spacecraft seven against a star background. He'll always be looking up at him as he comes up. And then this particular point occurs, actually, where the two will literally join together, uh, and there'll be some variation here, but that point will be two minutes into light. So that now that he's gotten very close to the vehicle, now he can take advantage of the sunshine, and they can see each other very clearly uh, once they're very close to, together. CBS News color coverage of Gemini 6 and Gemini 7 will continue in a moment. At this moment, the historic moment in space as Gemini 6 closes on Gemini 7, its terminal maneuvers having begun uh, just uh, 17 minutes ago, and uh, even now, if there are any mid-course corrections needed in this last uh, 35 miles to, to separate them, uh, Shira is making the first one right now. He'll make another one in another 10 minutes or so, and uh, then at, fi at uh, 2.26, uh, just, uh, let's see, that's 15, 14 minutes from now, they should be within 1,000 feet of each other, the point at which we are considering rendezvous having been achieved. Already, however, they are in visual contact. Just a few moments ago, Tom Stafford said, it looks like we've got them at 12 o'clock high. Those are the important words confirming that they were in visual contact uh, with the, each other. They could see each other floating there through space. And now as they close uh, at uh, some uh, at a rate of better than uh, 100 miles an hour at this moment, and it will slow considerably, of course, uh, a little later on, uh, they are obviously beginning uh, to see each other much more clearly. The closest that uh, any other uh, space travelers have come to this feat was back in 1962, when uh, two uh, Soviet uh, space uh, craft, really capsules on a ballistic missile that is unmaneuverable, of carrying Andrei and Nikolaev and Pavel Popovich uh, came within about four miles of each other. They did see each other, but that's as close as they came, and it was for a matter of seconds. CBS News color coverage of Gemini 6 and 7 will continue in a moment after a pause for station identification.
As Mission Control in Houston has told us, this is the waiting period. The spacecraft are out of communication with ground stations as they hurtle over the Indian Ocean uh, and as Gemini 6 is closing slowly with Gemini 7. They have established a visual contact. They see each other. Uh, they established some time ago radar contact, so their onboard computers are telling them just how far apart they are and how much they must fire their thrusters and in what direction so they can achieve this rendezvous. Uh, and uh, they are talking uh, with each other, we assume. It is not, and not, may not uh, be actually in communication at this moment because their primary means of communication is by relay through the ground stations, but they can turn on UHF transmitters and talk one with the other if they decide that this uh, is necessary. They are now uh, just about uh, 11 minutes from the point when they should be within a thousand feet of each other. And here's an announcement from Paul Haney in Houston. This is Gemini Controlled Houston. We've had no contact with either spacecraft since our last announcement. According to all our plots here at this time, the two should be eight to nine miles apart. We uh, are very hopeful that the coastal center of Quebec will be able to get a piece of this, or at least the end of it, as they uh, come together. But we just don't know yet. The line out there is very good today, and their acquisition has been good. Good range on it. This is Gemini Control, Houston. At this point, at about 15,000 feet or some three miles apart, Shira was scheduled to slow down his uh, Gemini uh, 6 uh, by around a 25 foot uh, per second uh, burn, or 17 miles per hour. Uh, that, that would be the speed he would reach. Uh, about 17 miles per hour in their relative speed. Of course, they're both going 17,550 miles an hour through space, but their relative speed is now 17 miles per hour as Shira begins to close in on uh, Gemini 7 Frank Borman up there in the command pilot seat of that spacecraft on his uh, just about to start his 12th day. That will begin at uh, 2.30, just as they are in rendezvous. And then in uh, just oh, four minutes from now, they should be within 3,000 feet of each other, less than a mile. That, uh, uh, that just over half mile uh, space, at that time, Shira will fire his uh, rockets again to slow down to about seven miles per hour speed in closing. And then as he comes into 100 feet, well, he slows down even more, down to about a third of a mile per hour. From there on out, it's just uh, he, he moves in as close as he thinks he wants to go beyond that. Uh, feels that the situation out. He has no instructions to touch Gemini 7 and probably would not uh, want to endanger the mission with such an operation, although as we've heard Bob Sharp say, uh, that he considers that to be no danger to that, uh, but uh, at any rate, it's not written in the mission plan that they should touch. After that, by the way, uh, Shira will back off uh, from Gemini 7 uh, to uh, at least 100 feet again. Then he will conduct what is called an in-plane fly-around. That is, uh, as they both go through the air at 17,500 miles an hour, without going out of orbit, he will try to maintain a position of 60 feet from uh, the Gemini 7, 10 feet more or less. Uh, within 60 feet, he'll fly around Gemini 7, coming back to this position. Then uh, Lovell will take the controls, or Stafford rather, will take the controls, and he will move Gemini 6 in and out experiment with it, and then he will conduct an out-of-plane maneuver, coming around uh, the uh, Gemini uh, 7 in that fashion, uh, out of plane, which takes a great deal more fuel than an in-plane maneuver, since you're fighting the centrifugal force of these two objects hurtling the Earth at 17,500 miles an hour. The, the, uh, man the rendezvous maneuvers, once rendezvous is established, do not include uh, any uh, extensive maneuvers by Gemini 7. It carried about half the amount of fuel uh, for such maneuvers uh, when it went aloft. When it was originally built, it was not planned that Gemini 7 was going to participate in any such uh, rendezvous operations, and there was no room aboard for additional fuel without endangering that mission. So it does not have enough aboard to participate uh, very extensively in these maneuvers. It's, uh, as they have referred to frequently, Borman and Lovell, the friendly target vehicle for Gemini 6. They really, for the most part, just sit there. 
they will yaw and pitch to keep uh, to keep the Gemini 6 uh, uh, in sight all the time, and they will move in and out uh, once or twice, but no extensive maneuvers.